Okay, so we need to pay great importance when we're racking up deformers to the input order. So to get that again, all I did was select the surface, right click on the surface, inputs, and then go to all inputs. And here we can see it's inputs, it's re receiving the skin cluster, which is the arm joints, and the blend shapes below, which we created in the last lesson. And what actually happens is, like we said with the blend shapes, all the blend shapes do is it compares the CVs or the vertices if it's a mesh and it looks at this CV, looks at this CV and says is there any difference and if there is it moves it so that's why when we made this into a nice sine curve it moves these CV CVs to match that sine curve but if we move so for instance if the inputs for this we'll switch it back to what it was before you can see it's, we're getting some really weird results here and the reason for this is because if I move this down, if you think the skinning, so actually I'm just going to go to these blend shapes and switch them off. So this is what the skinning looks like. And basically, if we do the skin first, so Maya evaluates from the bottom up, here we're doing the skinning first. So what's going to happen is Maya's going to see the skinning and move it down. And then it's going to evaluate the blend shape. And then what happens is, for the blend shape it looks at this and because the skin's moved it down all of a sudden this does not match the blend shapes below so what's actually going to happen is for this first sine wave it's going to take all these CVs and get them to match this straight line and then for this and then for this and that's going to cause some serious problems because we need the blend shapes at default and you know the ribbon to be the same that's why we duplicate them across so to solve this, if we put the skin the blend shape first, what happens is if I just reset this back to normal, what happens is now the blend shapes so I'll re re enable the blend shapes by selecting the nerve surface, going to the inputs, you can see this rib blend and just set them to one. So now what happens is it looks at the nerve surface, which was the square nerve surface, looks at this these three down here, you can see that this has changed so it matches it and then afterwards it moves it with the skin so now we can see by setting this blend chips to evaluate first the blend chips are going to move the mesh and then we get the skin in afterwards so it's preserving the shape we had down here and it's working with the joints Okay, so I'm going to reset these back. And one thing we had down here, we didn't. So just look at this. We'll reset the scales. And one thing down here, we can see one problem we had of why that might have been happening earlier on with the large fall off. So we had a had to edit the skin in a bit there and this will be the reason why so all I'm actually going to do down here is just delete these to get rid of that skinning I'm going to delete the history on these two guys so we've gone back to the defaults and delete the history on them and we'll just create those joints quickly again I'm going to grid snap it because I know I made it in the middle and then I'm going to hold down C, curve snap it and then I'll duplicate it to the end holding down C to curve snap it Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11 for the middle in here because we know we made it 10 on each side then duplicate this to about the 5 position and then the same on the other side so you can see they're now evenly matched and then before we skin these remember we want to 
So I'm moving it in the Z to lock it to the Z axis, holding C. I'm going to curve snap it back to this nerve surface. So we've got it lying on top of that curve, that nerve surface. And that's what we want. So that's the reason in the last tutorial I forgot to the joints were made on the grid, which would have been right here at the back. So I'm just going to move these forward a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to rename these and mirror them back across again. Okay, so I've renamed them, mirrored them across. I'll select the joint, select the mesh, bind skin, smooth bind. I can put the drop off a bit more, put free, hit apply, we can see, yep, that skinning's a lot more better now, this time, much better. Do the same on this side. Okay, so, I'll reset this control back. So we've got the joints working in there. So all I'm going to do is, we want something to control these joints now. But we don't want to every time we want to edit the arm, we don't want to look at the arm, then move down here, move the joint, and then remember all these translate values. We just want some controls actually on the arm, physically attached to the arm. So if we move this arm, you can see the control, just grab it and move it. So what we're going to do is we've got one, two, three, four, five controls. So I'm going to create a curve. I'll just vert snap it to one of these joints. Scale it up a bit. I'll show the mesh. I'm actually going to hide the control curves at the moment because they're getting in the way. Rotate this. Get it to some sort of volume of this arm. Okay, so I'll hide the mesh again. And the first one I'm going to vert snap. To this driver joint here, control D, let's snap it to the start, show the mesh so we can scale that up a bit. And control D again, bring it to that wrist down here. Okay, cool. So, what I'm actually going to do is these mid joints here, I'm just going to delete because actually I quite like just having the control because we've, we don't want to add too many controls along here and the majority of the animation we're just going to be taking this elbow and just editing it slightly so I just want to leave just with this joint in the middle so I can change the orientation of the elbow whilst keeping the IK rig and if I do need that extra bend with those joints in the middle we can use this sine curve here and another thing, I'm actually going to delete these two end controls because again, what we did with the sign here, we did the drop off so as we do the amplitude, the star and end aren't going to move so they're going to stay constrained so on the rig, his clavicle isn't going to you know, jump up out here and jump out of its socket so again, with this down here, we're just going to use these two end joints as anchor points and we're just going to move this middle joint so what we can actually do here if we, with this control I'm going to um, delete history, freeze transformation I'm just going to hide this, make sure the pivots on that first elbow joint ok and I'm just going to hit control G Let's say first we'll rename this, so CC underscore left it's got arm and score and I'm call, call this bend. And like with the names down here, they're quite descriptive arm, ribbon, blend, joint, C, and so on. But with the animation controls, we want to make them a bit shorter so we don't really necessarily need to know that it's working with the blend shapes. The animator just needs to know that it's the bend control so we can get this just to bend the arm. OK, so I'm going to select this and hit Control g again to group it, copy the name over, grp underscore, paste the name and this is going to be the bend off set group, 
centre of the pivot, so it's in the same position. And all I'm going to do is select this joint, shift control click this group, and go to constraint, parent. I'll check the options. And I'm actually going to leave maintain offset off, so you can see that we've ori orientated to that joint's orientation as well. So it's now aiming down that axis. So if we go to the object mode, we can see the move tools aiming down the axis there. So we're just getting it so as we move this, we're moving this control. So it still works with the arm. But all I'm going to do then is select this control and go to Windows, General Editors, um, Connection Editor. All we're going to do is reload the left so we get that control. Select the middle joint reload right and then I'm just going to take I'm just going to actually one more thing we actually need to do we can't connect the translates over because the translates have these values in here and we don't want to use a constraint because even as we move the rig we don't manually move the arm we don't want those translates to go over if we so say like if we move this arm we don't want any information to go across because we haven't moved this control that's been moved as a result of the IK bending. So what I'm actually going to do here is get this joint here, hit control G, center the pivot on it and reload that in the right. So now we've got all these clean values in here and I'm going to take the translate and actually just put that into the translate, the rotate into the rotate and the scale into the scale. So now what this means is we can move this control about and now as I move this it's going to physically just send its information over so moving it in Y it's going to move it up moving it down it's going to move it down and all that's doing is this curve this control curve sends its translates down to the blend shape so down to this joint it moves it which moves the nubs plane which moves for a blend shape moves the ribbon so all that happens behind the scenes and later on this is going to be hidden but all the animator needs to know is selecting this control here is going to move that arm up and down so now we can have some really funky animation in there or some jiggle and different things because we can change the scale you can see we can start having these bendy sort of get these really funky curves in there and rotate this about and again this all still works with the IK and FK bending so here you can get some really weird funky results and then just reset the settings back to normal so this is going to work with the IK and FK cool. and also because we can rack these deformers up again selecting the sine wave as well we can add a bit of sign in there we can start animating along that sign I love that sine wave it's amazing and we can still move these on top so we've got all these like we've got the IK, we've got the FK, we've got this offset this bendy arm and we've got the sign in there so there's amazing control that we can have over here so we'll set these back to zeros set the control back to zero and before we progress any further what I'm actually going to do is hit control D and shift P on this to unparent it and reset its rotations so getting that in the world space again and I'm just going to move this to the opposite side and move that over make sure I've got snapped to the correct joint Delete history of freeze transformations, rename it to the right, right or one, and again we're going to do the same. We're going to group it, set the pivot on that, select the joint, select the group, constraint, parent that, 
get the name so we'll make sure it's the off and it's so we're just doing the same here parent it to that so parent the rotate off the offset group so it matches that control and it follows along with that control and again you can see here some funky values funky stuff happening so we just want to check the inputs of this so right click inputs all inputs and we can see the blend shapes happening after so we want to middle mouse click and drag that down and we'll just check that's working fine and we'll do the same again windows general editors connection editor reload left move down to the joint here we want to group it center the pivot reload right with that group still selected and we want to get the translate and just connect that straight up translate rotate and scale okay now what we could do with these groups we've made these rotate offsets for these two controls we just want to go ahead and move them into the respective groups so the control objects move them in there start cleaning up this so I'll take these two ribbons put them back into the extra hide and we'll start renaming these things so these joints down here I'm going to rename these A B because we, re we deleted those mid joints so I'm going to rename these that's the B joint copy the name this is a GRP underscore B off for offset do the same on this one this is B offset group so that's the A B then the C joint and this will be the A, B and C joint again and again th these joints at the end we're never going to move these, these are just there to anchor this curve so we're just editing that middle of the curve and if you want you can go ahead and start actually putting in your own skin weights in here so if you want the fall off to be a bit more, a bit sharper or whatever you can go ahead and edit the skin weights of those Okay, so now these sign twists. So this is the. So I'm going to do the left. So N L for non-linear underscore left on. I've got sign. That's the uh, the left arm blend. Or the left arm ribbon blend. Underscore sign. So again, just being descriptive, it's a non-linear deformer, it's the left, it's the arm, ribbon blend, and it's a sign deformer. Do this to the other sign, rename it the right. Again over here, the twist. Now, with these two twists, I'm actually just going to delete these, because I didn't really want that twist in there. But I'm going to keep these two nerves planes here as backups or later on we'll add another control in there we could delete these and remove them from the blend shapes if we want to but I'm just going to leave them there so I've got the control to add an extra deformer in there if I need to so it's just all set up these non-linear deformers we could put in extra to hide so we don't need to see them the same with these joints down here now with these joints down here all the joints in the rig have been in the global move and the joint section because we want everything to move along together everything's going to be in their nice little group moving together but these joints down here they're not really used for skinning with the rig and they're not used for skinning with the ribbons they're used for skinning with these deformers, these blend shapes so we're going to add these to the extra to hide because adding them to the rig if we then scale the rig it's going to scale the blend shapes which is going to scale the ribbons which in turn is going to screw it up so that's how to set up 
and what we're just going to do is blend shapes, we'll just hide that group. Cool. And we'll, one last thing, we'll just colour these in, enable overrides, and for these arms I'm actually going to call it, turn these yellow on either side. These aren't going to move too far away from the arms, so it's okay to have them yellow on both sides. You can choose a different colour if you want. Test that moving along. And one thing before we do, move on actually, I'm just going to show the extra tide groups. And I'm going to select both these arm controls that we had. And just looking in these sign curves, these sign nonlinear deformers, we can see we've got an amplitude, wavelength, so I'll just mess about with these actually. Amplitude, the wavelength, so how many waves, how many curves up and down. And the offset's going to do that nice little animation along it. So I said, uh, testing this, if we put the wavelength So it's got a maximum of 10, a minimum of 0.1. So I'm just going to pause this and note these down. Okay, so I just noted down what the minimum max of each one of these attributes is. And what we're actually going to do, so I've written just in a notepad, this is a sine wave, which is the envelope, which is you know the on and off switch basically of this nonlinear deformer. The amplitude can go to minus 5 to 5, wavelength 0.1 to 10, and the offset is minus 10 to 10. So I've just jotted them down quickly. And what this means now is I'm going to select um, both these bend controls. With these selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Add Attribute. And what we're going to do is add a sign attribute. Minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default 0. Let's click Add. Right, so I'm going to undo that. So undo that. I'm actually going to put this sine weights. So I know that's the on and off switch sort of thing. Sine might be a little non-descriptive. We might think that's the whole sine attribute. So minimum of zero, max of one, and default of zero. Click add. And then I'll put amplitude. And I'm actually just going to put sine at the start of each of these. Sine amplitude. And we jotted this down earlier, so minimum of minus 5, maximum of 5, default of 0. Click add. And then sine uh, wavelength. And this had a minimum of 0 0.1, maximum of 10, and a default of 1. And then, last but not least, the sign offset. And this was minimum of minus 10, maximum of 10, default of 0. And we'll add that in. And because we had both controls selected, we can see it's added to both sides. Okay, so now what we can do is I'm just going to go to Windows Render and Edit, uh, General Editors and Connection Editor. And I'm just going to connect these up so we don't have to select the sine waves down here and keep, you know, changing the values. I can just move this bend control and then change its sine attributes. So scroll both down at the bottom sine weight and that's going to be the envelope and if we can't see things in here what we might actually need to do is you can see we've got this sign selected here but actually the inputs is sine 2 so if I select this and 
paste it into the select by name and then go reload right and now we can see we've got those attributes available so as make sure you've got the actual correct thing selected so sign weight into envelope sign amplitude into amplitude and wavelength wavelength offset offset we're leaving the drop drop off as normal because we want the ends tapered down so we'll do the same over here so we'll just check that actually so selecting put sine weight to 1 you can see the sine amplitude wavelength and offset so all that's working do the same on the other side reload left select sine 3 so select the name paste it up here to select it reload right we'll just do the same over here sine weight to the envelope amplitude wavelength and offset and hit close. So I'm just going to go to extra to hide and rehide that. So this basically means the animator can now go to IK or FK, move the move the arm into position if they want stretchy on, and then move this bend control to get some sort of bend in there and then if they want some funky animation they can turn the sine wave on and get some sign offset, some movement in there. And this, with the sign weight, we can leave all these on, and then just blend to move it off. So we can preserve whatever sign waves we wanted that we can just switch on at any time. So I'll just undo that to move it back. Okay, so that's how we've racked up several deformations so you can see the power of that because now we can get quite a lot of control in there in the next lesson I'm just going to do another default bind so we can see that working in you know with the actual skin and then we're going to go ahead and do the same with the antennas at the top